All right, we're going to take a turn here. The Orpheum Theater has been a staple in the city of Phoenix for more than 90 years. From its incredible architecture, it is beautiful. It's beautiful. There. Yeah. To the famous faces who took the stage. But it's not just the stories told on stage that have people flocking there. It's also rumored to be um, a house for guests of the afterlife, right? <laughs> who just, you know, they still love theater, right? <laughs> it makes sense, maybe. Kylie is joining us there with why the Orpheum is said to be one of the most haunted places in the valley. So I'm a little freaked out, guys, because Victor, our photographer, he used to work here back in high school. He claims, I don't know if he's just trying to freak me out, but he was laughing and saying somebody is behind you watching your live shot. I don't see anybody, um, but apparently, I know, I'm a, little, I'm a little freaked out. This is a beautiful theater, I will say. So I'm just trying to uh, uh, soak in the beauty of the theater and not really worry about the ghosts because this is known to be one of the most haunted, spooky spots in all of the valley. And so we had to come here on our little jaunt as we uh, go all around town to kind of find some of the uh, creepiest spots in town. Beautiful theater, uh, but there are some... I kind of feel like I'm here. I'm like, what? what's going on? I'm a little freaked out right now. We've got David Cruz joining me today. Uh, you run things here at the Orpheum Theater. How many ghosts have you guys seen before? How many uh, friends are watching this live shot right now? Well, we don't really know. So there's at least four of them that we know of, but we're pretty sure that there's more and people keep having more and more experiences as time goes on. So, so we're standing in an area uh, where Maddie apparently uh, likes to hang out. Can you tell me who Maddie is? I don't see her. I'm just, I'm just waiting for her to come up, but what's Maddie's story? So we don't know where Maddie comes from or why she's here yet. We keep trying to find out, um, but she's been known to shush people or tap them on the shoulder if they're misbehaving. Um, and there's some pretty uh, freaky stories that have happened with Maddie as well. Okay, you have to tell me one of the freaky stories involving some dancers who were on stage. What happened? So uh, years ago, there was a group of Chinese acrobats performing and they were in the middle of a dance number and five of them all stopped at the same time and reached out towards the balcony. Towards right here, kind of where we're at. Yep, and then they recoiled and sort of went back into their dance. And so after the show, when they were asked what happened, all five reported seeing the same thing. And that was that they thought that a woman was about to jump off the balcony. And instead, she walked straight off the balcony and disappeared into thin air. Oh, okay, so Maddie is just one of, you said, at least four ghosts here. This is the balcony area. What's going on down below? So down in front of the stage, we get some really audible uh, hauntings. And then on stage, uh, there might be something that is uh, not exactly human. Um, I'm not going to go into that. You'll have to come and check out one of our ghost stories to hear that story. Um, and then just recently we have our newest story um, which is one of our employees had a full-on experience with an apparition appearing to him and this was recently like this year yes this was uh, sometime in february and what happened ah, what's <laughs> up? oh my gosh victor oh my god <laughs> I did a story a couple days ago. I did not get freaked out. I'm a little freaked out here. You stop it. Oh, now he's trying to fall. Maddie's getting, oh my gosh, Maddie's getting you. Uh, have you had an encounter? I have not had an encounter here, okay. but one of my employees who is not the type to make that type of thing up did have, have an experience. And uh, she appeared so real to him that he actually spoke to her thinking she was a real person not registering that she was, you know, in a period dress with a fascinator and the whole uh, netting over her face and things like that. And uh, as he went to follow her, she disappeared. And so we're pretty deep down a rabbit hole on who that is right now. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. Okay, I'm told I'm have 30 <laughs> seconds, then I'm uh, racing out of here, getting in that truck and heading back to the station. I'm spooked out, I will say a little bit. Um, if you want to come down, you guys do tours. You've got five coming up. Explain what happens and how people can get involved. So on October 25th, 26th, 27th, and on the 30th, and on Halloween itself, we are running ghost tours uh, starting at 6 p.m. Tickets are available at phoenix.ticketforce.com, and we'll take you on an hour tour, places not usually open to the public, and you'll get to hear all about all of our resident ghosts. Okay, so we only have three or four minutes, but come for an hour. And oh my God, I can't imagine how I would be leaving this place after an hour of ghost stories. So, <sighs> 
Maddie apparently is here. Maddie, I don't know where you are, but I hope you liked the live shot. Uh, I hope you approve. I'm gonna do. You, come sit down with me. Okay, let's sit down. I'm gonna soak in the Orpheum. I'm just. I'm not gonna talk about the ghosts. I'm just gonna. Uh, it is a beautiful theater, so I'm soaking in the beauty and the intricate <laughs> details of a 90-year-old theater in the heart of downtown Phoenix.